Uh, I finally saw something for the first time in a while. Oh, man, what was it? I saw... Oh, wait, we just talked about it. Oh, yeah, just... <laughs> well, sort of. I saw... Oh, yes, we did just talk about it. Anyway, saw uh, Sicario 2, Soldado. Yes. Or Oh, no, I'm sorry. Sicario... Uh, colon. Colon, Day of the Soldado. Okay. I'm glad we cleared that up. Overall, it was honestly just a, a tiny bit better than the first one. I'm shocked that you said that because I, everything I've heard is that it, uh, people have been saying it's like a shell of what the first one was. And it's like a, a lot of people said it's like this is a – they said the movie didn't need to happen. So I'm interested in hearing your take on like what made the movie so, so much more than the first one for you. Really, it was that it uh, – I don't know. It's just the first – okay – my problem with the first one is it, like that uh, movie from the 60s based on the Shakespeare thing, A Man for All Seasons, mm. it's just the first half hour of that is it's just really boring and there's not a lot moving. Mm-hmm. Like you get an idea of who the king character is and then once he's on trial, they're like, oh, now shit's getting real and it gets really good all of a sudden. Mm-hmm. And for the rest of the movie, it's great. And I feel like the first Sicario did that because you're like, all right. We're in this world. We meet uh, Emily Blunt's character, but then it just kind of it just gets a little boring. But then it picks up again when uh, what's his face uh, Benicio del Toro's character becomes more of a focus, right? And it gets better. This it was it was good throughout. It's just there was also pacing issues throughout. Like it was it was sort of uh, one of those things where. You're so invested in wanting to know what was happened, you just get impatient. <laughs> You're just like, get on, where the fuck is he going? Right. It's like, God, tell me, tell me, God damn you, tell me. <laughs> You're just like, come on, like, let's move this along. Like, you'd figure out the idea of a scene. It's like, oh, so he has to go meet up with so-and-so. All right, then fucking meet up with them. Mm-hmm. And it, it was weird, too, is because at the same time, it would have, like, pacing issues. Sometimes it would just be like, Boom. Just hit you with something out of nowhere. Jesus. But yeah, in general, I would say acting wise, fantastic. That's what I was expecting. Because you got, man, Josh Brolin. He's on a fucking He's roll. He's on a roll, but the true star Benicio is Del Benicio Toro. Del Toro. That's, I mean, he was the true star of the first one. Yeah, but I mean, even some of the bit parts, like there's the, uh, oh, well, I should probably maybe give a brief overview of the plot. Okay. So there. Well, okay, it's also sort of confusing. So, well, I heard so, it's it's about, like, the United States is trying to declare the cartel yes. a terror group. okay, that's it. So the United States is trying to declare the cartel a terror group, and they do this... What the fuck was it? Oh, in order to, to start a, a quote-unquote war between the cartels, they stage a kidnapping. Mm. I mean, technically it's a real kidnapping because they do kidnap her. <laughs> But they make what they do is they make it look like the cartels did it in order to try and start a war. But then what ends up happening is there's complications, and the idea is they need to get the girl who's been kidnapped across the border. Mm-hmm. That's like the main uh, plot once everything goes to shit in trying to start this cartel war. Because it also ends up that they sort of instead get into it with the federales. Because some of them are bought off by the cartels. Mm. So, again, that's another thing. The girl is actually a really good actress. Isabella or Isabella Monaire, I think is how you pronounce it. She was in Transformers 5, the what? last one. Was she? Yeah, she was. Was the, that her? The little girl in it. Really? Yeah. Well, she she was good in this. Yeah. <laughs> I, I haven't seen that, but I would imagine her acting is just, you know... No one's acting as good in Transformers. No. I've seen I'm seeing a lot of other names in here that I'm like, they were in this. Uh Matthew Modine, Catherine Keener, uh Jeffrey Donovan. How oh, are uh, wait, Catherine Keener. She played uh one of the overseers of his little committee. Yeah, yeah. And I remember you saying that you I mean you just said that all the, the supporting all, characters. All are the good. supporting characters in this are really good. Well that's good. Uh the thing is Again, it does it a little bit, not as bad as other movies. It does sort of promise you more of a. It promises you a smart shoot 'em up. Mm-hmm. And again, the the elements of suspense and the plot, like every, it was pretty interesting. 
But there was one side plot that it was like they started off with a terrorist, uh, a Muslim terrorist group, mm-hmm. like, a, you know, Islamic extremism, ugh, Islamic is ugh, extremism. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Can't talk today. But so they go with that angle for a bit and then they sort of abandon it in okay. the middle hmm. or not even like they, they have it at the beginning and then they're like, well, we did this with the Middle Easterns. Let, uh, let's do it in Mexico. And that's kind of it, but it, I felt like there was going to be more to it. Yeah. I, I get that a lot with, well, because this is written again by Taylor Sheridan. Yeah. Um, a lot of his movies are just like, you think they're going to do certain things, like certain tropes, or you think the story is going to unfold in a way, and then it kind of just doesn't. The movie kind of unfolds in, in a different way, and it feels real. Like, that's what, that was one thing about yeah. Hell or High Water, is that like, it was still a movie, but it still felt very real. Or like Wind River was like, it was a movie, but like there was stuff about it that felt like, oh, so this isn't just a movie. This feels like a true story. So like, I guess maybe this, that's what he was trying to do, maybe, perhaps. No, but it felt more like an abandoned thread. Yeah, yeah. Or like an abandoned uh, plot, plot thread. Yeah, yeah, plot yeah. thread. And that was a little like, I was kind of like, oh yeah, what the hell happened with that? Like after I finished watching the movie. There, I would actually say there's some parts where I was like, it was weird, uh, weird how it bounced back between trying to be realistic and trying to be uh, more of an action sort of movie. Mm-hmm. And there's one weird thing about the the movie. I feel like a lot of the action was just like sneak attack kills rather than like straight up gun battles. Yeah, that was one thing I was also going to ask: is how how is is the action as good or, or better than the first one because that was one of the things oh. that I really liked is like you had like a couple like the shootout at the beginning with like where they find the bodies behind the drywall yeah and like that shootout at the border the shootout at the end like there's a lot of great action scenes like do they does it follow in the footsteps and I guess overall does it feel like it's directed by a different person yeah sort of because again a lot there's like some act there's a couple action scenes that are more of like straight up shootouts, but they're done really well and they're filmed really well. Uh, and that was something I really enjoyed. That's good. There's some where it's just like, Oh, that was quick. <laughs> it's yeah. kind of like, all right, we're going to gang up on them and kill them all. Well, blam, blam, blam. All right. They're all dead. All right, let's go home. Overall though, the action was good. I would say it didn't, it's actually weird. I, I kind of forgot that it was directed by someone different. Mm hmm. Who is this directed by? Stefano Salima. He's okay. uh, an Italian gentleman. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. that Directing kind of, it just felt like pretty much a sequel. Mm-hmm. How, how upset are you that this movie has a shittier rating than Uncle Drew on Rotten Tomatoes? Oh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's not a, that's not a joke either. It, uh, it, has, it has a 64, whereas Uncle Drew has a 60 fucking six. Wow. What the fuck is going on? <laughs> Man, we got to see this Uncle Drew now. I guess I have to see it. I'm I mean, curious. I like Nate Robinson, but this is ridiculous. <laughs> uh, but back to Soldado, how I feel about that. I would say I'm surprised. Yeah, me too. I don't know. The, the thing I liked about this movie, though, and maybe this rubbed people the wrong way, is it's like... Look at how ugly and messy life can be when dealing with large international policies. That was another thing I was going to ask you. Is is this movie, do you think part of the reason why, because it's doing okay, not great. Yeah. Um, do you think this movie is too depressing to be a summer movie? Should this have come out in like September? Actually, yeah. To, to be honest, this is not really a summer movie. It, it was weird though. The way the audience reacted, like sometimes it's like, whoa, whoa, ha, like, <laughs> Like, it felt like your summer movie crowd. Right. But then it's also pretty glum. Mm -hmm. But then there's a thing at the end, and I I guess I won't spoil it, but it's just, it kind of was like, come on. It Mm -hmm. was a little too silly, and it was sort of like, ugh, so we're a Marvel movie, basically. (laughs) And I'm like, what the fuck is this? Was it, does it like leave it open for a a, a trilogy, if you will? Oh boy, does it ever. Yeah. Uh, It's, it's, that's, that's another criticism I've been hearing is like, it feels like they're trying to make a trilogy out of something that really didn't need to be one. Is do you get that? Uh, did I, you get that impression from? I get that vibe, but I think because of the subject matter, there's endless amounts of stories you could come up with. Yeah, it's not like this one time in this one very specific place. You mm-hmm. know, it's not 
It's not like trying to come up with a sequel to uh, like Double Indemnity. <laughs> it's like, well, everyone's dead, and Edward G. Robinson's just like, man, nah, see, I had you all figured out. Yeah, here's a sequel to uh, fucking Witness. Right. <laughs> just like what? Like Why? Michael Mann movies are yeah. very like this time, this place. Mm-hmm. Like you wouldn't, or did he do Sixteen Blocks? Oh, uh, I can't I, remember. That might have been. I, it's, but I know what you mean. It's, it's okay, very but that, much that's so like that. another example where it's like. All right, everything's wrapped up in a great big bow. Mm-hmm. Blah, da, 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 da. Oh, yeah. But, like, you still don't know shit about Benicio del Toro, really, like, at the end of the first one. Like, you know that he's, like, the lawyer and all that. Mm-hmm. You know, I, th- I, I think that's... I understand that criticism. It's, like, maybe that type of... when they, Like, action thrillers are not usually begging for sequels like a straight action is. Right. But I wouldn't say that it was unnecessary... I just hated the way they went about setting up this next one. Mm. Yeah, that's what I've been hearing is that a lot of people feel as though it's it's just like, I, I you know, this didn't need to have a sequel for a lot of people. And I get that. But would I turn down a Sicario 2 or 3? Probably not. See, that was the thing is I thought this was, a, I mean, it, again, it was just barely a little bit better for me mm-hmm. because it was more, the it was dispersed, the action and like the best parts were kind of scattered throughout, right? Whereas it, the bulk of the good material was mostly in the end act of the first one and mm-hmm. the middle a little bit. How was the score this time around? Because I know they didn't have Johan Johansson to do it because he passed away sadly. So they had a guy named Hildur Gudna's daughter. I don't know how you pronounce it. It's something whatever s- Norwegian slash Scandinavian. Uh, the score was pretty good. I didn't really notice it. It was just, I mean, there's times where I did, but that was only because I, uh, you know, sometimes like, what does the score sound like right now? <laughs> Let me analyze this. Right, right. But I mean, it was fine. It was just, I don't know what the fuck to say. Like, I guess I'm like, I'm disappointed because the trailer, re- I, I thought this was going to be a lot better than it was, even though it was just a little bit better than the first one. Mm-hmm. But uh, I don't know. I, I guess... The point about it, whether it deserved a sequel, that really didn't have to do with the quality of it. Okay. It's just there's some moments where I'm just like, come on, just get to the... Like, I hate when you watch something and it's like, right, right, you gotta go here, you gotta do this. It's like, we get it, fucking move along. Yeah, that's that was one of the things I liked about the first one is that it was really... It was it was good, but it, I felt like they could improve because I'm like, I don't know if I want to see this Emily Blunt character again. Not because, like... I don't like her, but because the, clearly the filmmakers and screenwriters don't care enough about her because she right. didn't do anything. Exactly. So she when was they, just kind of stuck in the bureaucracy. Right. So when they pitch this where it's like, we're going to have a sequel where it pretty much focuses on Del Toro's character, I'm like, that sounds right. like an improvement. Um, and I guess from you, it sounds like it kind of is. It but, kind of is, but not really because, but it's just maybe they needed a better director or something. Maybe it should have, Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, so overall, I'd give it uh, a 3.5 out of 5. That's pretty good.